Hi everybody, how you doing? It's me, it's the Renaissance Builder again. Nice to meet you, nice to see you again. <laughs> Alrighty, yes, okay. So, um, three things I want to talk about today. Three things. First of which is going to be the smooth stone generator behind me. Actually, first of which I'm going to talk about my villagers. Because I came up with this... Well, you know what, I'm probably not the first one to come up with this system, but it works really well for me. I'm happy with it, so I figured I'd share it with you. Uh, and here's how it goes. If you'll notice, I have four 7x7 seven seven areas. Now, they're not perfectly 7x7, seven seven, because you'll see I, I've got the corners um, knocked out there in the middle. It's not that big of a deal, but essentially, it's four 7x7 seven seven farms each one has a different crop i've got beets to the top left i've got wheat to the top right i've got potatoes to the bottom right and well you know what i said different the the bottom left is wheat too i haven't found any carrots in this world yet like what gives you know right like carrot i, I whatever i've been in this world for a while and i still haven't found any carrots so i'm still hoping to do that but here is why I like this system. You'll notice that I've got, um, uh, there's a straight villager up in that one bed to the top right. I can't get him out. I don't know what in the world he's doing up there. He won't come out. Maybe if I put the doors down, but whatever. I mean, he's just been up there minding his own business. So here's what happens, right? So you get what, what you need is two villagers to start off with. You guys already know this. You need two villagers to create a village, right? You, you, get, you take the villagers, you feed them, and they, you know, have a baby, and they poop out the baby, and then that baby grows up, and you just keep feeding them, and, you know, hey, nature takes its course. Well, here's why I like this farm system that I've got here. Now, mind you, this isn't the most efficient people farm or villager farm. I'm sure. However, it's it's very nicely effective. And I say nicely effective in that, you know, the villagers still get to be part of the villagers. Or the farmers still get to actually be part of the village. And it doesn't look like, you know, a big old automated farm floating out in the distance somewhere. So it's nice, actually. It's really nice. But here's what happens. So the farmer has his own patch of farm land to work on. What you do is you create the farm field, and it's a 7x7 seven seven field with the middle block knocked out and waterlogged. You put your your uh, composter on top of the water, then you put something on top of the composter so they don't jump on it. If you'll notice in the top left farm, there's a couple grass blocks in the middle of it. I need to hoe those up, um, but... Uh, before I got everything figured out, I had to put fences on the stairs and everything, and, and actually the uh, iron golem ended up spawning in there. And Either way, they stomp the crops, and it ends up, you know, making grass, which is, isn't what I wanted, but that's what I got. But for the most part, you'll see, like, this guy right here, this, this guy's, his farm looks great. Like, it looks, oh, you can actually see them doing the little food trading thing going on there. That's adorable. Although, maybe he needs to throw a little harder to get over the fence. Whatever. But, um, point is, actually, that makes my point really well. So, those guys over there doing their little uh, food trading here, that's what happens. So, the farmer, um, you know, takes care of his crops, right? He always has too much food. Well, if he's in his field all the time, and that's the only place he lives at, then he always has plenty of food. What's up, librarian? How you doing? Um, since he has plenty of food, when any other villagers come along, they immediately want to feed the other villagers. So the farmers throw food at the other villagers. Well, when the other villagers take that food, then it becomes the whole mating ritual thing. And so here's how it works. You set up your 7x7 seven seven farms. You give your farmer a place to sleep and the composter, and a pre-planted field. That's the key here, is the field has to be pre-planted. If the field's not pre-planted, I mean, I guess it could still work. It's just not quite as efficient, because then the farmer's just going to, well, he's going to plant whatever he has, 
And if he doesn't have anything to begin with, then he ends up, um, you know, he ends up, well, I guess not planting anything. So pre-planted field. You get the idea. You know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, so pre-planted field. 7x7 seven seven pre-planted field. You put the farmer in there. You shut the gate. He lives in there. He farms the field, takes up all the stuff. You know, that guy's full of beets and that guy's full of... Well, he's supposed to be full of bread. I don't know if they fixed the bug yet or not. But that guy's full of potatoes. And if I could ever find a carrot, then that guy will end up being full of carrots. Um, idea is here... Well, I already explained it. The villagers, you know, some, like, uh, the, uh, oh, what is that guy? The shepherd. So the shepherd wanders around there, and say the shepherd's hungry, right? So the shepherd wanders over to the farmer, and, oh, it must be getting soon dark time. <laughs> I love the, I love the daylight schedule, whatever. Um, but anyhow, the shepherd wanders over to the farmer, says, hey, I'm hungry. The farmer gives him food. They end up doing their whole little mating ritual dance thing, and voila. They breed another villager, a little baby villager, and that that works out great actually because the farmers spend their time and working their fields. They still get to interact with the rest of the villagers, and they breed at the same time. So it's like a non-stop uh, little breeding villager factory here. That's what this ends up being: a non-stop villager factory, uh, and it works really well. It honestly works really well. I like it. So if you guys are looking for a way to make sure your village, your village is always, you know, getting new villagers, then this works out really well. It really does. I recommend it. You know, go for it. Why not? What do you got to lose, right? All right. So let's, uh, let's head on over to uh, the bed because uh, we need to do some sleepy sleepy, you know, keep the, keep the bad things away. Which actually doesn't matter nearly as much right now, because of by the between all the cats and all the iron golems, well, nothing really has a chance of spawning and actually doing damage to any of my villagers these days. So it, it works out really well. All right, so now that we're awake, I want to talk about the second thing. The second thing is this here machine. Now this here machine, I have been working on for a while. This is, was supposed to be a redstone powered smooth stone generator. That's what this was supposed to be. Um, there'd be lava source blocks here, and then there'd be water. The key is you have to water log the pistons, and then the water source, the lava source blocks over top would end up creating stone in front, smooth stone in front of the pistons, and then the pistons would push it into the middle. And if I come over here, this is the middle, right? So the the pistons are supposed to push it into the middle, and then you auger it out from the middle. Well, here's what I actually found ended up happening. Um, the <laughs> the the I don't know if this is a bug that got fixed but I couldn't waterlog my pistons so as soon as I put the lava over top here it turned my water source into smooth stone because that's how smooth stone is created so smooth stone is created let me look at you so smooth stone is created when a water source block meets a lava source flowing lava so flowing lava runs into a water source block it turns it to smooth stone here's the problem um, when you do that it turns your you, you no longer have that water source block so I got to rethinking this thing right and I took down I took down most of the lava source blocks and I replaced it with one center channel and the pistons don't do anything um, but this thing actually works really well. I'll show you. I did show you a little bit. Um, but if you stand here and just straight up work it, like, okay, so if you have an auto clicker, then you can understand that this thing is just going to sit here and mine blocks, like a lot. And uh, it turns out it, it actually drains your hunger, so you got to have, you know, chicken and stuff to eat to do this. Um, but, yeah. 
Now, supposedly there's a thing where... Uh, actually, I should explain how this works. So here's what's happening, all right? I've got water source blocks on both sides. And if you guys are familiar with the whole uh, infinity pool... Actually, I can, I can show you over here. So this is called an infinity pool. It never runs out of water. So if I... Let me just stack these up so I can do it a little faster. If I... Whoa. Oh, there's a spider. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm... I'm attacking the spider with a bucket. And it's going... Ever so slowly. <laughs> why am I... Why am I doing this with a bucket? Whatever. Alright, so... That's not what I wanted to do. I'm going to put these back. And then... I don't want the spider eyes. I don't want the string. Because they're going to get in the way. Okay, let me reset this. Alright. Try this again. Okay, infinity pool. There's What you do is you put a source block here. You put a source block here. And then the middle becomes a source block. And this happens pretty quickly. So watch. I can fill these buckets up really quick. Now, it, you can only fill a bucket with a water source block. So, I don't know the timings, but I can imagine that that being a water source block, uh, well, that as fast as that goes, I'm, I'm thinking, like, this is prob we're probably talking about um, zero ticking kind of speed. Like, this is updating the water source block, you know, possibly... Okay, I'll pick that stuff up now. Um, I think the, the water source block gets updated at least every tick or every game cycle. Program cycle, that is. Whereas the lava block, uh, the lava is actually really slow. And I can demonstrate that here. Uh, so, let me auger this up. I know, I just lost a whatever. So if I take that out, Boom. That's, th that's what I'm talking about right there. Um, it takes a long time for the lava block to update. So what that tells me... So what's happening here is... Supposedly there's a bug where if you have a standard pool like this... That the, the water won't update as fast. And then the, the lava flows down and then the water runs into the lava creating cobblestone instead of smooth stone <sighs> i mean in, in automated machines i guess that kind of jams up the machine but i haven't had that happen here in this system so here is what i'm going to do and just to show you this is what i mined up in, in a short period of time. this was here already i'm not trying to tell you this is what it'll do after you know half a minute of standing here what I'm actually going to do is go put um, a bunch of this stuff away. Well, it looks like I already have uh, a lot of things put away here. Uh, but what I want to do is, is put a bunch of this stuff away so that I need to go get that. I'm going to tear this whole thing down. And we are going to rebuild this... Uh, smooth stone generator in a fashion that's not all this. So a smaller fashion. I'm only going to make it... Well, actually, I was hitting the dirt block, wasn't I? So I might still make it five deep. Um, if you guys are running a beacon, or if for some reason you have... Let's see what this is. It's efficiency three uh, and unbreaking three, mending silt. It's, it's... I like this axe. Um... It's a pretty fast act, uh, pick, pick, not axe, pick. Um, it's a pretty fast pick. If you guys have a beacon, you could probably get through this faster than I am. But I'm going four deep at most by the time this thing updates. Like, at most. And there you go. Just that little bit. Ten blocks. Um, so, that kind of tells me that... There's, you know, 
a lot to go. Oh, let's see. What do I... I need to clear some inventory here. I might just... You know what I need to do? I need to make... <laughs> I need to make a bloody storage room. Gonna need another one. Let's go ahead and place this. And eh, we'll go ahead and place it here. Just double that up. Alright, let's go ahead and put away some of this stuff. I want to leave that in there. I do. For some reason, I just want to leave that in there. Alright. I really need to make a storage unit. Alright, so... I'm going to go ahead and tear this whole thing down, like the whole thing, and we are going to rebuild it in a nice, simple fashion that you guys can have as a smooth stone generator that's very simple, very easy to build, and, well, so far, works flawlessly. And it will do smooth stone, and if you, you, so to do smooth stone, you need a silk pick, silk touch pick. To do cobblestone, you use like a fortune pick. I have, I, I, I had a fortune pick up here. What I, what I do with it? Yeah, there we go. So if you want to do, like, if I want to do cobble, I would use a fortune. If I want to do smooth, I use the silk touch. That's how it works. Um, all right, guys. So I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna tear this thing down, and uh, and we'll be back. Okay, now we're back, and I've got my deck all cleared out. I'll tell you what. I actually. Um, I built this extra piece of deck off the back of the the you know the fortress that we got going on here. Um, this I want to be a workshop, and frankly, I have a whole lot of space I'm not using here. One of these areas I have I want to make a, probably that area over there. I'm going to make a, an enchanting room. Um, not sure what I'm going to do with that up there, and the and I'm actually thinking that the area underneath here I'm going to make like indoor villager type stuff. But, I'll be honest with you, most of my farms I like to have outside. Um, like, you know, the chicken farm, and I'm going to build another uh, cattle farm over here too. I'm actually going to make the kelp farm too wide. So I'm going to double double up the width on the kelp farm to double that production on both of them. And uh, I'm going to do a cow farm. I have an idea for a cattle farm that's almost automatic. Like, all you have to do is feed them, and then it does the rest. But that's going to be some experimenting and some fun. Um, so, anyhow, uh, back to this. What we need is... I don't want to be on the edge. I don't know. For some reason, I just don't like to be on the edge. I'm actually going to gather my smooth stone. I don't know. My smooth andesite. I kind of like the smooth andesite. Um, I don't know why. Like, I do structural bricks all around it, but then I like the smooth andesite for building on. Now, here's what we want. Um, I don't want to be on the edge, and we need three spaces wide plus the edge. So that means five spaces wide. So if I go here, and I'm going to put this block right here, this is going to be the back. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a piece of obsidian on the back. Why obsidian? Uh, that's going to be the back plate. So if I stand here and I'm I'm excavating out through and say I put a beacon over here or something and I put haste on that beacon and it actually makes me fast enough to actually auger it all the way to the back um, faster than, you know, the stuff could, then it's a lot harder to auger through the obsidian so the machine doesn't break. It's, it's a backstop that I can um, mine against and it doesn't break the machine. And that's literally the last piece I'm going to be using it. Now I'm going to go ahead and put five, five deep. And we do five deep because that's how far you're going to get when you're mining. One, two, three, four, five. On both sides, three, four, five. Now this one, I'm actually going to break this one uh, because I need to jog over with the hoppers. Now I'm going to place my here we go. I'm going to place my chest right there. Why do I not want the chest right in front? You know, with the hot, because I need to step up to here. So here's how we're going to arrange this. Let me get my hoppers. All right. One into the chest. Go around here. Make sure the pigtail is actually into the chest. All right. And then 
I want to do one into that hopper, right? Yep. And then the rest of them right down the line. And then this one, how do I, let's see if I do that, that should be good. Let me just confirm that by knocking this block out. I'll just knock all of them out. So confirm that the pigtails create a chain from that one, loop over and into the chest. There you go. All right, we're going to put those blocks back. This is the basis of, um, I guess you would call it the floor. Yeah, that's the floor. All right, now I'm kind of thinking I want to use maybe wood on the edge, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, what I am going to do is alternate between uh, regular... There's no redstone to this, by the way. So... I am going to alternate between uh, regular and cracked brick here for the corners. Alright, let's get the cracked here. Uh, just because I want it to, you know. So I'm thinking about doing wood. Um, actually, no. No, come to... Actually, well, you know what? No, wood would be fine. If I go on the other side of this, on either side of that with... Yes, because up here then starts the um, holding for... Yeah, up there starts the holding for the lava... So this starts, so yeah, I can do wood. So do I want, you know what? I think I'm going to do uh, stripped. Do I want to do stripped? Or do I want to do planks? I probably should have thought about this ahead of time, huh? Um, screw it. Let's do planks. I can put these back. All the pistons. I don't need any of the pistons. Because this is not a redstone creation. Just going to auger down a couple of these little planks I guess we gotta go to I guess we gotta hit the sack okay now around this thing I like I said I'm going to use planks um, as a cosmetic thing you guys can use whatever you want I would probably avoid using wood um, Mostly because, <laughs> well, you're going you're gonna to have lava in here, and wood doesn't exactly work out well with the lava. Now, um, I'm going to put glass right here. here. Right here, you can do one of two things. You can either do a transparent block or upside down stairs. I'm going to use transparency um, just because I'm going to go across the whole thing. I get kind of claustrophobic, so going with transparent stuff, you know, makes it less claustrophobic. Here's an important feature. Um, put your whatever blocks, if you use upside down stairs, these blocks can be anything. Uh, these blocks, either transparent or upside down stairs to get to your thing. Put a sign here. Doesn't need to say anything, but it keeps the water from flowing out. At this point, you can put your water in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, this is going to take me a couple seconds because I need to get some more water uh, you're going to need 10 buckets overall just just understand that okay now here's the secret to why this works you see how the water's flowing from this side because i have water source blocks over here well we're gonna start adding water blocks to here and you'll notice it does something very interesting. Like, actually, I don't even need to add any more water, but I'm going to anyhow because, well, I have it. Boom. Notice how there's no flowing water anymore. And here's why. Uh, water source on either end makes sure that the middle is always a water source block. And this here sign keeps it from flowing out. So that's how this works. So now the middle uh, will always be water source blocks. 
Now at this point, I can put whatever stone arrangement I want for those pieces. So I put, uh, I'm going to come up here, maybe throw some cracked in here, make it kind of random. There. There we go. All right. Now that creates our our well for the lava. Uh, so we're gonna put our lava water source blocks up here. Uh, so let me just go ahead and get the lava. All right. That one. That one. That one. That one. That one. Okay, now when I add the lava source blocks here, they are going to spill over and create stone blocks underneath. See? That's smooth stone. You can see from here that smooth stone the whole way back and that's just because of the <laughs> of the blocks here now this needs to be capped I don't want to cap it in full blocks I'm going to use slabs so let me just get some slabs here I could probably just use those um, but whatever uh, yeah I don't, I just don't feel like using full blocks is, is honestly what it amounts to. So I'm going to slab there. You have to, especially being close to wood like this, <laughs> you definitely want to slab this, this stuff off. Okie dokie. Um, well, that was not good. Uh, oh no, this is this is not good. No, this is not good at all. Um, oh my god, what the hell? Let me get some sleep. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, oh, man. All right. Oh, yeah. That's... Whew. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's, um... Oh, <laughs> All right, I got to do something about that. I I do not know what I'm gonna do about that, but this here uh, this here lava thing, I need to. Oh Jesus Christ! So I need to refigure that one out. Cause that's that's not gonna work. Maybe I actually need to make sure these are full blocks in here, and that it's actually fully covered. Maybe that's the trick here. Okay. Oh, you're a creeper. I don't like you. Oh, nice. All right. Give me that. 
Um, alright, hey guys, so, uh, update. I redesigned this thing, I actually shortened it up quite a bit, and I replaced the half slabs with full blocks, covering the lava, and we haven't caught fire. <laughs> yeah, we haven't caught fire yet. Still haven't rebuilt the damage that that caused, I'll have to get to it. So, yeah, redesigned it to shorten it up to only three blocks, so... This is the back wall. There's your obsidian, right? And then one, two, three. Uh, so there's three water sources on each side and then three lava sources behind these blocks up here. And, you know, that's that's what we got. Put a little trap door to look good. Um, I just use dirt for now. I have to tidy it up. I'm gonna have, I, I don't know. As you guys can see, I usually put function before form. So, I'll have to figure out how I want to make this thing look good, but that's what we're at so far. So, here I went ahead and spent 10 minutes. This is what we got after 10 minutes. That's 800 smooth stone in 10 minutes. That's 4,800 smooth stone an hour. And, and again, I reiterate, if you want cobble, just don't use a silk touch axe. And you'll get cobbled. So, <laughs> there you go, guys. Uh, that's uh, that that's that's how this thing works. And I haven't caught fire yet, and it works flawlessly. I didn't have one single glitch or hitch to it. Um, so yeah, I will uh, I'll work on making this thing actually look pretty. But for now, I'm um, I'm really happy with this thing. And I think if you guys are looking for a smooth stone generator. Um, you would be very happy with it as well. It works great, works phenomenal, it's easy to AFK at, and, you know, there you go. No more mines, just to get smooth stone. We're going to call that one as it is. Um, let's see what the damage is up here. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess it's good. I got plenty of spruce lumber around here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yep, nothing but wood. Well, there you go, guys. If you're building if you're building your structures out of wood and you're playing with lava, I guess you should probably be more careful than I am. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for watching. This is my shaky sand um if I can get in front of it, right? The uh, shaky sand. What am I talking about? This is my smooth stone machine. This is what I'm going to be using into the future to do all my... You saw the cave. Um, that's where I've been doing my mining so far for this whole thing. But uh, I'm getting tired of that. So this is actually what I'm going to be doing from now on for all my smooth stone and cobblestone. Um, like I said, if you want cobblestone, just use a non-silk touch axe and you'll be fine. Um, so yeah, that, that's how this goes. Um... Okay, yes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. I appreciate it. Let's go see what the villagers are up to. Because, <clears throat> you know, I, I can't be on track for anything of closeout or video. i got to figure out what to do with that guy. He just never leaves. Oh, yes. So, there we go. There's our screenshot. I'm going to screenshot that right there. Oh, I can do this. Let's see. This uh, print, print. Ta-da! Probably screenshotted the wrong one, but whatever. Um, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you for watching my, this video. Hopefully I can edit this thing down to be short enough. Oh, by the way, I'm going to enclose this whole thing. Yep, going to put a roof on this. Because I'm going to put some bees down there, and I'm going to put a roof on this, and then I'm going to put some doors, and I, that way I can have, you know, bees doing their thing in here. Because I miss my bees. I got a nice little bee farm at the other base. I miss them gonna bring him over all right guys thank you very much have a good night and as always i will see you in the next one <laughs> thank you very much goodbye